Before we start this video, I wanna say a quick shout out to our sponsor, which is 50 Cards. So 50 Cards is an online store, which you guys have already heard me blab about. You can pick up singles, play sets, deck boxes, sleeves, everything you need for Vanguard, and you can get 5% off with code Nexus. I also wanted to mention that we are gonna be doing a giveaway. I have two boxes of Dimensional Transcendence right here. These are not from the original case. These are separate boxes that I picked up at my locals for you guys. So I'm gonna be going into more detail about that at the end of the video, so be sure to check that out. And with that, let's just go ahead and get right into the unboxing video. How's it going, everybody? Today, we're opening up a box of DZBT03 Dimensional Transcendence. So this set, obviously featuring the return of Dayusha to standard. And we got some other new fun units that are all kind of part of the glitter or cray lore. But the most important thing about this set is the Shoji Doji support. Shoji Doji is going to be getting some crazy upgrades this set. Deck's going to be tier one. And uh, we also got some support for other units. You can see that Lukie makes a comeback as well. And we got some other fun looking new people. And then Arkite got a new upgrade as well. So we got some fun stuff coming out in this set. I think people are really looking forward to mostly the Daiyusha and the Shoji Doji stuff. But obviously this is kind of prefacing the hype for set four. So be on the lookout for that. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and crack open one of these boxes. So let's just jump right into it. All right, jumping right into the unboxing here. Give you a good look at what the box is looking like. Got the contents here. So we do have some secret rares in this set as well. So I'm actually looking forward to that. We have some extra and extra parallels. So we got some Bang Dream triggers in this set as well. Uh, Civil rares and frame rares are still here along with double frame rares, unfortunately. I'm honestly just frame rares as big as hater. I'm not a big fan of them. Sometimes they're okay, but I just miss SPs. We, we just need to bring back like genuine good SPs. But with that out of the way, we're just gonna go ahead, crack open this box, see what we pull. Pop that open, Wishy Navi and other Bang Dream stuff. No box toppers, unfortunately. That's honestly kind of a big L in my opinion, but especially because the sneak peek set had a really good promo for Orphist. That would have been really cool to have in this set, Bushy Road, but no promo, uh, I guess. We're just going to head move this to the side and we'll start opening these up. Some dragon thing, stealth thing, dark states. This looks like generic support. Starter for the new ride line. Got our first dimensional robo, which is Die Dragon. Pretty cool. It's like the, the back view of Die Dragon, I guess. It's kind of weird. Uh, Defractal Dragon. Actually pretty decent for a double R, not gonna lie. If any cards put in the order zone, this gets boosts. It's not terrible, but yeah, put that off to the side for now. Opening this one up, woo. It's the ride line for the new Stoica deck, which is basically like bugs. Another D-Robo, a generic Brankate card. The grade one for the new Undercover deck. This is a new uh, type of order card for the Stoicaea deck. It's kind of trying to be like a control deck, but not really. It's just minusing power and making your opponent's Vanguard lose drive checks. So it's kind of control, but at the end of the day, it's not like you're disrupting their board in any way. This seems pretty good, like for what it does in terms of for the Coda Blaze deck. It lets you look at three cards. You can choose a card, call it to rear. And if it's a grade two or less, you can put it into your hand. So it's still, you know, good for board building for kind of plus one, it's not bad. And this is a generic double R. Well, not generic, because it's actually for Maelstrom. Cool, we got Maelstrom support with 5K power and 5K shield. And also when it's discarded, you can call it back. So it's not terrible. All right, getting some decent support for the Maelstrom players out there, all three of them. Generic card. This is for the new Brank, or not Brank, a Dark States ride line. Generic cards, Shoji Doji card, generic card. Another double R again through the double R is pretty quick. Oh yeah, Silhouette's got new support. So we, you know, more Silhouette stuff. Ooh, we got our Undercover Triple R. So this is really, really good card for the Undercover deck, obviously, but really good for any Shadow Paladin deck. So Phantom Blaster Dragon, Luard, they benefit both. Because what it does is you can look at top five, look for a Shadow Paladin unit, and you put it into your hand, an Undercover or Shadow Paladin unit. Then when it attacks a grade three or greater unit, if you have a Vanguard Undercover or Shadow Paladin in its clan, you can Soul Blast one, it gets 10K. 
So it's still really good for building up resources. We have Shadow Paladin PGs, which is cool. So you can run the Shadow Paladin PG in the Undercover deck just to add PGs to your hand. So this is pretty much a staple for any of those decks. So cool, that's that's like a pretty sought after triple R for this deck, honestly. We got Goyusha is back, the Undercover Ride Line cards, generic card, monster card for Arkite, uh, armed card, and ooh, a really good triple R for Stoicaea. When this is placed on rear from hand during the battle phase, e blast three, you can choose an order card without regalia's piece from your drop in your hand. Then you can choose a grade one or less card from your drop called to rear, or, or you can choose, put it in your, you know, card from drop to rear. So that's really good for like Leanne Orn. And then it has during your turn, if you have four more units, it gets 2K, so it's just a 10K booster. So it's, it's a really good card for Leanne Orn in general. Definitely another sought after generic card. So if you're Planning on building any Stoicaea deck, I think you should just have a play set of this, just in case. On to the, oh, this pack is tough. That was a that was a tough pack for no reason. Generic, generic. This has to do with the ride line, I believe so. Yes, it does with the new ride line. That looks like a generic card. Oh, look at that artwork. That's so cool for the starter. That's really cool. Whoa, la 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 poco coco. <laughs> that name is insane. I love that. A plant token card. Yep, makes plant tokens. And we got co 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 the blaze. I honestly don't really know what this deck does. Soul Blast 2 for each card Soul Blast for this cost. Choose up to one of your rear guards in the same column as that card. Stand them and it gets 5k. Same card name as that card. Okay, so we're playing Neo Nectar in a Dragon Empire deck. Soul Blast 2 cards with the same name as this unit and discard a card from your hand. You can stand this unit with 5k and drive minus one. Okay, so it seems like it's all about like duplicating and cloning units. Pretty interesting that they would give this mechanic to a Dragon Empire deck, but you know, get what you get, I guess. The artwork's really cool. So that's nice. Moving on to the next pack. Oh, look at this dude. Shaky Peanut. This guy looks looks like fun. Put this card as a card from your deck. Put this in your soul. Damn, that kind of sucks that it's, we got an awesome artwork, but the card sucks. Another D-Robo. A generic Keter card. This looks like a generic Brankate card. And Bang Dream is back. So this is a music order. When this is placed on rear, reveal the top card of your deck. Put in your hand. The reveal card is a trigger unit. Choose one of your Morphonica Vanguards and it gets 5k. All right. So that took a rare or a common slot, which is nice. So we got a rare and another rare. Code of Blaze support. So I at least do like the fact that the Bang Dream cards aren't taking slots for valuable cards, just because obviously this is more so for like, these are just kind of thrown into this set. So I am glad that they are at least taking, you know, common slots. And then let's see what we get in our next one. This looks like a Coda Blaze support card. Yep, I remember, I remember seeing pictures of this card. What does this do again? When this attacks, you soul charge to, and you put all the trigger units, soul charge to the bottom of your deck in any order. Faye gets 5K at the end of the battle for each card put in the bottom. Oh, wait. That's insane. This card is really, really good. You kidding me? Wait, this would be really good in Chrono Jet. Just cause like you just fill your soul and you're also deck thinning. That's that's kind of awesome. This is also a Coda Blaze support card, generic Dart States card, generic Dragon Empire card. This is a generic card. Why does this get 15K? If you have three or more set orders. Set orders in Dragon Empire. Interesting. Uh, what is this? Choose a card with Supreme Bait from your drop and it gets this unit can be played from drop. Interesting, Miasmic Beast. We'll have to look into how this card works. That seems interesting. But put it aside, that was all rares for that pack, unfortunately, but we still got more to go. Jeez, why are these? Oh man, why are these booster packs like so tough? I'm gonna have to, there we go, man. All right, well, we got them out of there. Generic, ooh, this looks like a gear card. When this place on rear, if you have souls, 10 or more cards. So you choose when opponents from rear guards retire. Okay, so retire. Another gear card, retire another unit. Soul trust one, choose when opponents rear guards and retire. A lot of random retire cards for dark states. And shield, we got a frame rare. We got freezing magic, froros. It's got the Kant and autos swapped, which is nice, but this is a Genesis support card. So when this unit's placed on rear, if you have a Vanguard with Minerva in its name, you soul blast two. Choose two of your normal units with the same name, with the same name and without Sentinel from drop. Put one in your hand, return the rest to your deck and shuffle. So, okay, so it's to put Genesis cards in your hand for Minerva's discard cost. And this is also a Genesis unit, so you can discard it for the cost. And we got trigger reprints. Yes, oh, this is awesome. I'm so glad we're getting more of these. So we got more triggers being reprinted in this set. So definitely really good to invest this set just so you can get more triggers. And this is just a blitz order card. 
really glad that Bushrod's doing this just because it's always good to have more of these effect triggers in circulation. So hopefully it'll drive down the price of these, but let's see how many of these we get. I'm gonna put this to the side just so we can get an understanding of how often we're gonna be getting those. I'll put the frame rare to the side as well. Moving on, this looks like a generic card. Oh, this is really good in Undercover. Oh, it has Undercover in its name. Yeah, obviously. The end of all this boosted. E-Blast 2, return this to hand. It's not bad. When it's placed on Guard Circle, you can put a card Undercover in its name to the bottom of your deck, and this gets 5K. 5K shield until the end of the battle. Okay, so you can recycle undercover cards from your drop put them into your deck which is nice and then you know you get more shield and obviously you get more cards in your hand after this thing boosts so i can see this good and this is pretty versatile in general i, I kind of like this that's a generic rank a card generic card we've seen before generic card we've seen before that's a dinosaur what does this do when it's placed on rare if you have if you played in order this turn you can soul charge too i could i could see that being pretty good down the line depending on uh, what other future Dragon Empire set order decks we get. And a generic Keter card, when it's placed, all your front row gets 5K. When your Vanguard is placed, your front row gets 5K. If it was 10K, that'd, that'd, that'd be crazy, but you know, you can't go too hard with the power creep. All right, so generic card, they get shield, Shoji Doji card, generic card, ride line card. Oh, we got an SR for, uh, this card's good. Paraphram, Param. When this is placed on rear during your main phase, count boss one, choose one card with grade less than or equal to your Vanguard. From your hand, call it to rear if you call the card you draw a card. So it's just count boss one draw a card, essentially like a net zero. Yeah, basically that way you're not, you know, losing hand. Then during your turn of your Vanguard's grade three or greater and you have four more units, gets 5K. So it's a 13K be beater and you can count boss one to, you know, play a card and then draw a card. It's kind of like um, uh, Squire Knight Allen and Little Sage Marin from V-Series. So I, you know, the practicality of this is actually pretty good. So I, I you know, this, I could see this being a good play set for a lot of decks. And anything else? Nope, just a, two rares. Oh, that's cool. This took the slot of a common. That's nice. So I'm gonna put all these to the side and we got a, we got a silver rare. All right, continuing on, we got the starter for undercover, some generic grade two, some other generic sorceress card, the ride line for the new Stoic bug deck. Speaking of Stoic bugs, we got a frame rare for this random grade one. The end of battle, the stacker boosted, put the soul, look at top seven cards of your deck, choose one codex card and put it in your hand. Okay, so getting more resources. And we got the dimensional fortress, die base. So this is the set order for the new D Robo deck. And well, we got a we got the rare of the frame rare, guys. Whoa. So I guess we'll technically put the frame rare to the side. Man, I, I miss hollows. Like just regular non-framed hollows. Those were so cool. Why are these so hard to open? All right, get that out of the way. Generic card, generic card, starter. And okay, cool. We got another trigger. So we got another Pro B draw. So two triggers in a box is not bad. And we got the double R for our Frobros. So that is nice. I'm gonna put that trigger to the side. So it does seem like even though they're reprints, they're not gonna be coming up as frequently when you pull them in regards to the triggers. Uh, whoa, look at that. Got one of those EX rares. This is Pastel Palettes Chi Chiasto Shiger Shirasagi. This is actually a really cool artwork. It's got a, we got a little foiled crit there. It's really pretty artwork. So I know people are gonna be going full out trying to get copies of these cards or like making, you know, like get the full 16 triggers if they can. Be on the lookout for that. And it comes in a common rarity too. So that's nice that it's taken that slot. I mean, put these uh, rares to the side and we'll keep it going. We got three packs left. And let's see, generic, 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 generic. Generic, uh, some normal order. Uh, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, retire it. If you have a Thunder Dragon Vanguard, bind that rear guard instead of retiring it. For a game where you can only play one normal order per turn and that like kind of lost one bind something, yeah, that's that's not really worth it. Oh, cool, we got another triple R. We got Rare, Rare Virus, which is the card for the art, new Art Kite deck. So this is the guy that's featured on the Art Kite artwork from like even the original one. So it has when this attacks, kind of us one, she's one of your opponent's vanguards and it gets a minus 5K power until the end of turn. If your opponent's vanguards grade three or greater, this gets 10K in a crit. So it's kind of like Upski died, which is cool. And then it also can't be chosen by your opponent's card effects. So it's even more like Upski died. So I do like the art, it's kind of following in Ava's, you know, 
same path in terms of like being able to pull out like your boss grade three guy on your rear. Uh, but I do like that it's similar to the monster deck, like with the zeal, that's the name. I was, I was blanking there for a second, like the zeal deck. I do like that we're picking up the monster aesthetic and reducing your opponent's vanguard power. So this is gonna be a fun deck to play for sure. And then move it on, see what else we got going on here. This is a ride line card, generic grade one, generic, generic. We got the order card for the Stoic K deck and this is the new order card for the Sacrifice Glass deck. There's a lot of text on this card. Manifestation of the Great Skyline Grand Dogma. If your Vanguard was not placed during the during the ride phase this turn, you can activate Persona Ride, choose any number of cards other than heals and over triggers with different grades when you drop and return them to your deck and shuffle it. So you can just recycle crits. That's pretty cool. This also seems like a fun little gimmicky deck. And another double R. Eternal Musician Moosey. When your grade three or greater Vanguard sacrifice glass attacks, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. When your grade three or greater Vanguard with Grand Dogma in its same attacks, this gets 10K? Whoa, that's pretty cool, 20K beater. That's not including the Persona Ride. That's awesome. Wait, and then this activates Persona Ride for you. So you, you just get that consistently? This seems like, this seems like such a cool deck. And look at that artwork too. This is so cool. Wow, Dark States get all, gets all the fun stuff. All right, last pack. Got a Shoji Doji card. I did see something shiny back there. Generic stuff, generic stuff, generic stuff, monster thing. There he is, Sacrifice Glass. So that's the, the new guy we've been reading all these cool cards about. At the beginning of your main phase, when your opponent's unit was retired on rear or guard, you can energy charge one. And that's not once per turn either. You just do that every time you retire something. That's pretty cool. At the end of all this attack, Vanguard, E-Blast 4, search your deck for Grand Dogma, write it as stand. It gets 15K power, drive minus two. And if you search your deck, you shuffle the deck. If you wrote a card, your opponent may draw a card. Oh, that is interesting. Giving your opponent the option to draw? Why did they add that? That's weird. Oh, it's because, no, wait, I'm, I'm getting it confused. I actually don't know why they're doing that. Maybe it's just because you're retiring things and then it's kind of that way your opponent doesn't neg too much. I don't know, that last part seems a little unnecessary, letting your opponent draw a card, but whatever. Sure, give your opponent an extra draw for playing the game. But this deck seems cool. We'll see if, uh, if anyone wants to build it or not. But that's it for the full box. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of organize everything real quick so you can see our polls. All right, so we got some pretty decent double R's. I think the main highlight here is obviously gonna be probably the Sacrifice Glass card. There's not really much else here that I feel like I'm super excited about, but you know, to each their own. Frame rares, we got some generic stuff. This is just a rare, um, but to have another frame rare of a double R is actually pretty cool for, you know, Genesis players. Move those over there. Triple R's, we got Glass, Raverus, Kotha Blaze. We got a really good grade one for Stoicaea and a really, really good grade two for any Undercover or Shadow Paladin deck. And then for our SR, Move these down for a sec. We got Pararam, Pararam, which is a really, really good card for Keter in general. A really good generic, kind of similar to the, the grade one here. And then lastly, we got some triggers. So we got two in this box. So we got a crit and a draw. And then we got some Bang Dream cards. So I got a generic, a generic. I got a Morphonica uh, order card. And then we got a crit. We got Pestel Palettes. I don't know what the ratios are with when it comes to Morphonica and the foil triggers, but they came out pretty nice. So I will, uh, we'll have to check and see as we start digging through some more boxes and doing some more research of uh, how often these pop up. But that's pretty much it for my box opening. Thank you guys for watching and uh, be sure to stay tuned. We got some more content coming up, upgrading some decks after set three. So be on the lookout for that. But besides that, my name is Richard and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. All right. This is the part you guys were all waiting for. So I have two boxes of Dimensional Transcendence. These are separate boxes that I purchased at my locals that I wanna give back to you guys. So this also wouldn't have been possible if you guys weren't you know, able to support me and the channel and support 50 cards. So if you guys are wanting to help support us or be able to, you know, help us do more giveaways like this, be sure to check out 50 cards, use code Nexus to get that discount. It supports the channel in a really huge way and allows us to be able to do a lot of fun stuff like this. Uh, Patreon and obviously YouTube memberships help with that as well. But thank you guys so much for your support and your contributions as a whole to everyone who's just been around and, you know, helping us with this. So going into the details about the giveaway, the goal of the giveaway is to get this video to 200 likes. Once the video gets to 200 likes, I'll go ahead and 
throw up a link and make an announcement and you guys will be able to enter. The giveaway will probably up for about, let's say two weeks. We'll do two weeks for that. And the winners will be announced um, by then. Get the video up to 200 likes. There will be two winners, two boxes, so two winners, and we'll go from there. So thank you guys again for your support. Really appreciate it. And with that, I'll see you on the next one.